Chapter four, test on curve sketching. So in this unit, you would have learned how to make connections graphically and algebraically between the key features of a function and its first and second derivatives and use the connections in curve sketching. So here we go. Um, identify all horizontal and vertical asymptotes and or point discontinuity for the curve defined by the following. Now, sometimes, I mean, this was a little hint to my students that there could be a point discontinuity. And remember, if there is a point discontinuity, that means that something in the denominator will divide out into the numerator. So the first thing you want to do is factor. You want to factor both the numerator and the denominator before you begin. So I'm looking for a product of minus 10 and a sum of 3. So product minus 10, sum of 3. That's going to be 5 and negative 2. 5 and negative 2. They multiply to give that and add to give that. And then to find the factors, we divide by the leading coefficient of the trinomial here, which is 2, and we simplify. So that gives me 2x plus 5 times x minus 1. So I have 2x plus 5 times x minus 1. And in the denominator, we have a difference of squares. So that's going to be 1 minus x times 1 plus x. Now, you could have factored out the negative to begin with, and then you would have had x squared minus 1, but this will work still the same, no problem. Okay, so when I look to simplify this, I can see that 1 minus x and x minus 1 are the same, but will give me the negative of each other, right? They go into each other negative one times. In other words, if I factored this a negative out of this, I could have written this as x minus 1 negative. So this is going to go into this one negative one times. Negative 1. So that's going to give me minus 2x plus 5 over 1 plus x. Okay, so now I'm ready to identify the asymptotes. So I know because this one divided out that that means there will be a point discontinuity for what makes this bracket or this one equal to 0, and that's going to be 1. So I'm going to say point discontinuity when x is equal to 1. Um, now, vertical asymptotes, what makes the denominator 0? So vertical asymptote will be what makes this 0, and that's x equals negative 1. And my horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote, we remember we're looking at what happens as x approaches infinity. And for this one, because the degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator, the horizontal asymptote will become the ratio of the coefficients of these variables. So 2x squared over negative x squared, so that's going to be y equals negative 2. Okay? Question number 2. The function x plus 1 over x minus 2 has a vertical asymptote. Use limits from the left and the right to determine how the graph of f behaves around the asymptote. Okay, so I know I have vertical asymptote at x is equal to 2. So I want to know the limit as x approaches 2 from the right and the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So I'm going to write it like that. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right of something, right, of the function is going to be so let's say I plugged in something really, really small, like 2.0001. So let's say 2.0001 plus 1. So I'm going to let x be 2.001 over 2.0001 minus 2. So you can see that's going to give me 3.0001 over point zero 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 one. Did I put enough zeros in there? I have three there, I have three. Okay. So as this, if you divided this out, you're going to get something really big, right? So this is going to approach infi infinity. So the limit as x approaches two from the right of f at x 
is infinity, positive infinity. So what if I do the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? Now really all you want to know is what happens as we approach from the left and the right of 2. So I don't have to use something really, really small. I could even put in 1 here. And if I put in 1, I would have 2 over negative 1. So I know it's going to approach negative infinity. However, you could still do this x equals um, 1.999, for instance, and see if it's positive or negative. And of course, it's going to be negative because we've already said that. So we could do something like this minus 2 and of course it's going to give me something really small and negative so it's going to be negative and really small and this is still going to be you know like a pretty decent number like 2 almost 3 I'm dividing by something really really big and negative so it's going to approach negative infinity so as x approaches 2 and remember the negative means from the left is negative infinity. So from the right, in other words, you'd have something like this. So from, as you approach from the right, it's going to positive infinity. As you approach from the left, it's going to negative infinity. Question number three. The function has an oblique slant asymptote. Determine its equation. Now remember, to find a slant asymptote, you need to divide. And how do I know it's slant? Because the degree in the numerator is one greater than the degree in the denominator. So I'm going to use long division, and I'm going to write this in descending order. So I want to put negative x squared plus x plus 1 here. Okay, so now remember from advanced functions, long division, you might need to go back and take a look at that. If I want to get rid of the negative x squared, I would have to multiply this by negative x. So you place it over your x units, just like if you had hundreds and tens or thousands, hundreds, tens and cons and um, units, you would um, you have to match them up, right? I'm putting this over here. So when I expand that, I get negative x squared plus x. And when I subtract, this all goes away, right? It's the very same. So subtracting, I get zero. I bring down the one. And that gives me a remainder. So negative x plus 1 over x minus 1. Just like if you had divided uh, 3 into 7, for instance, and you'd say 6. It goes six, uh, 2 and 1 third times. Okay? So that's... Okay, so let's say here. Now we say um, g at x is equal to negative x plus 1 over x minus 1. So that's what we've got here. So as x approaches infinity, 1 over x minus 1 approaches 0. Therefore, the oblique asymptote is y equals negative x. Um, yeah, OK? So really, this, this is not true here. This is this times x minus 1 gives you this. I don't know why I said that. I don't know why. I wasn't thinking. It's a sunny day. Okay, explain what each of the characteristics 2 to 7 means. Half a mark each. Then sketch the function f at x. Okay, so it says a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and x equals 4. So I'm going to put a dotted line there. There's my vertical asymptotes. Always mark them and label them. The limit as x approaches infinity of f at x equals 3. That means there's going to be a, vert a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. So that's right here. I draw that on. Okay, now it says to explain what each of the next things, the next things here mean. Um, so this said, this is means horizontal asymptote, y equals 3. F at minus, f prime at minus x equals 0. So that's telling me there is 0 slope, 0 slope 
at x equals negative 6, or you could say it's a critical value at this, same thing. Um, these two things, f at minus 6, that means these are coordinates, right? These are just coordinates of points. So 2, 3 are points on the graph. f prime x is greater than 0. So if the slope, that means slope is positive in these, um, for these domains. So slope positive. f prime x is less than 0 in these areas so slope is negative negative f double prime x is greater than zero so what does f double prime x greater than zero mean that means concave up concave up for these domains and this one says f prime at minus nine equal oh sorry f double prime at minus nine equals zero and f double prime at 2 is equal to 0. So these are points of inflection. Okay, so all that lingo down. And now we have to draw to sketch it. So I would put in all my points first. So I have minus 6 and 8. 10, 9, 8, minus 6. So I have a point here. And I have another point at 2 and 3. 2 and 3, so you're going to say, oh, it's right on the horizontal asymptote. That's okay. You can cross a horizontal asymptote. You just can't cross a vertical one ever. Okay, so this one here is going to be a critical value. It's going to have zero slope there, so I still have to figure out if it's going up or down. Points of inflection, um, f double prime at minus 9. So at minus 9, I have a point of inflection, but I don't know which way it's really going yet or where it's going to be. Let's go back to these ones here. Um, so, okay, so we put in the coordinates. So 0 slope at x is minus 6. I've written that on. We have positive slope for x is less than negative 6. So s less, less than negative 6 means it has to be coming up to this point, right? Positive slope. So here's my positive slopes but it's also approaching zero as x approaches infinity. And at minus nine, we had a point of inflection. So I've almost drawn that in here when I did it. So here's concave up. Now it's concave down. See that little inflection point. And then, um, so that was positive slope in there. Positive slope between zero and four. So zero to four, that's in this range here. And this is a vertical asymptote, but I have to go through here, and then it's all positive slope in there. And then we have negative slope, so for the rest, so this is going to be negative slope this way. And on this side, don't forget, you have to have something in every quadrant here. Every section needs a, a part of the graph. So in here, uh, for x greater than 4, we still have negative slope. So negative slope, and it's going to approach the asymptote, horizontal asymptote. So there's your lovely curve sketching for that one. Okay, number five, sketch the graphs of the following rational functions on the grids provided. So this is kind of based on um, what you did in advanced functions in that you should be able to sketch this graph looking at this equation. So first thing I know is that I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So I'm going to put that on here. Dotted line, label it. Better if you have color, right? Vertical asymptotes, zero and two. So that's x equals zero and x equals two. So I'm going to sketch those two on, x equals two. Okay, so now what are you going to do? You know this one, 2 is an odd asymptote. Remember that? If it's an odd number, it means the function's going in different directions about the, uh, the vertical asymptote. And if it's even, it's going in the same direction. So let's look at what's in between 0 and 2. Plug in 1 to see where I'm at because 
generally these things are symmetrical about here unless we're not crossing we have no x-intercepts zero is never equal to one so there are no x-intercepts for this function okay so back to plugging in what happens when x is one i'd have one times this is negative one so one and negative one is a point on the graph now because i know there are no x-intercepts that means this has to be going down here if this is odd that means this is going up here and then i can continue this out um, if you put in uh, something like well we know it's not crossing here so this has to be a maximum value you could plug in something smaller and also on this side this is an even asymptote so this function has to be approaching infinity uh, approaching as it approaches negative infinity this is going to approach zero and this is going to go in the same direction so you could plug in some extra values if you want, but I think you'll find that um, it makes sense if you've done this before. Okay, this question here, um, what is the horizontal asymptote? Look, we have x squared over x squared. So the coefficients, one over one, that means y equals one. So this is showing you that you don't have to um, you don't have to go through a complete curve sketch to, to make a sketch of the graph, right? This is, when you do a complete analysis, you're finding everything. This is just doing some visual representations here from what you know. So I know that I should factor this so I can see where the asymptotes are and the x-intercepts. Okay, so both difference of squares. So this is telling me I have x-intercepts at negative 1 and positive 1. Negative 1 and positive 1. I have vertical asymptotes at minus 2 and plus 2. So I'm going to sketch those on here. Okay, these are odd asymptotes. So um, I'm going to check what happens when x is 0 here because that will tell me what's happening between these two. If I put in 0, I would get 1 quarter. So that means this function is going to just go like this, right? And then it's going to go down because it doesn't cross the x-axis again. Okay, so these being odd asymptotes, that leaves nowhere else for this section of the graph to go but up and up on this side. And there's your curve sketching. Okay, let's move on. Number six. Determine the values of a, b, and c. If f at x equals ax cubed plus bx plus c has a point of inflection at 1, 5 and also passes through 0, 3. So these are points on this function. So this one is interesting in that I've given a zero and you know if I plug in zero here, I could solve for C right away. So I'm going to say F at zero equals, so I get A times zero cubed, B times zero plus C and F at zero is three. Three is equal to C. Okay, so I've got one of the variables set already. Now the second thing I'm going to do is take the derivatives, the first and second derivatives of this function and see what I can do with those. So f prime x is going to be 3ax squared plus b and f double prime x is going to be 6ax. Okay, so I know that f double prime at 1 is going to be 0 because it has a point of inflection there, right? So f double prime at one is equal to zero. You know why I'm saying that, right? Because remember we did second derivative, set it to zero to find the points of inflection. So one has to be a point of inflection. So that means f double prime at zero, at one is equal to zero. So zero is equal to six a times one or six a, so that means a is equal to zero. So now I know that if a is zero 
and C is 0, how can I find um, B? So let's go just using a point on the graph. So if I said, oh, well, let's, let's use the point 1, 5. So F at 1 is equal to 5. So let's plug that into this equation, the original function. So I'm going to say um, 5 is equal to A is 0. I'm going to plug these all in even though you wouldn't need to. A times 0, 1 cubed plus we said B we don't know but B at 1 plus 0 right all these things we already found so I'm ending up with this is 0 this is 0 and I get B is equal to um, oh this meant we forgot um, we had C was 3 and I plugged in 0 there what was I thinking okay so I had 3 here so I have b is equal to 5 minus 3. So b is going to be equal to 2. So therefore, a equals 0, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 3. Okay? Question c is 7. It says find all points of inflection and prove that they are points of inflection. How do you prove a point of inflection? Well, let's get our first and second derivatives done first. F prime, oh sorry, y prime is 5x to the fourth minus 20x cubed. And the second derivative is going to be 20x cubed minus 60x squared. Okay, so points of inflection, we set the second derivative equal to zero. Okay, so for points of inflection, set y double prime equal to 0. 0 equals 20x cubed minus 60x squared. Let's pull out some common factor here. Nice big fat 20x squared. That's going to give me x minus 3. Okay, so therefore x equals 0 and x equals 3 are possible points of inflection. Possible. Remember, we always have to check these things. Okay, so let's check it using our second derivative test, f double prime x, and we're going to put 0 on here and 3, and we're going to check the concavity on both sides of this function. So when x is negative, this would be positive, this is negative, so I get negative, and it's concave down. If I plug in a number between 0 and 3, I'm going to choose 1. That's going to give me 20 times negative 2. That's also negative. What does that tell me right away? That 0 is not a point of inflection. Why isn't, isn't it a point of inflection? Well, because when I plug in 0, or when I plug numbers here to the left and right, it's concave down, it's concave down. So it's not. If I go larger here, obviously this is going to make this positive and this positive. So that means 3 is going to be the x coordinate for the point of inflection. But I need to find the point. Don't forget, you need to find the y coordinate, right? I need the y coordinate. So when x is 3, y equals 3 to the 5th minus 5 times 3 to the 4th power, and that should give you negative 162. So therefore, um, 3 and minus 162 is a point of inflection. Okay, so for some of you who may be wondering what could this graph possibly look like, I'll give you a quick sketch of it. Um, if you use Desmos, you can also try this. Um, you end up with a fourth root here and a single root at x equals 5. So the function looks like this, goes like this, and then it goes way, way, way down, way off my paper, and it comes back up through here. So there's a point of inflection at 3, so that would be like here, where it actually starts turning back around something like that. 
Okay, so this is really flat here. X to the fourth, you know what that looks like. The function goes like this, right? So you have a fourth root here and a single root here. Okay, you didn't need to do that for this question, but it helps to understand. Okay, number eight says find the coordinates of the maximum and minimum values of this. You must prove that you have found maximum using a test of your choice. So this is asking you to show that you know how to use a first derivative test or a second derivative test. Let's do both. So f prime x, I take the derivative, 3x squared minus 12. Um, so max and minimum values is first derivative, right? So for critical values, set f prime x equal to 0. And I get 0 equals, and I'm going to take out a 3x squared minus 4. And of course, this factors nicely x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so my critical points are minus 2 and plus 2, the x-coordinates of my critical points. Remember, you always have to find the y-coordinate as well. Okay, so I label it, label it f prime x. I put in minus 2. I put in plus 2. This is a first derivative test. So I'm going to check minus 3. Plug it in here. This is negative. Minus 3 minus 2, that's negative. Negative times negative is a positive. So I have positive slope here. Between minus 2 and 2, um, if you put in, let's say, 1. Don't put in zeros because, especially for something, well, you could put in 0. That would give you 2 times negative 2 times positive. That's going to be negative. If you get 0 for an answer, pick another number, okay? And larger than 2, let's say 3. That's positive, that's positive, that's positive, everything's positive, and we have positive slope. So that means this is going to be a minimum value. This is going to be a maximum. Okay, remember it's going up, that's coming down, that's going down, that's going back up. And I need to know the y coordinates. So I need to know what is f at minus 2. And that comes out to 21, and f at 2 comes out to negative 11. Therefore, give a nice little statement. So maximum at minus 2 and 21 and minimum at 2 and minus 11. Not so bad, right? Okay, so for the last question, it is a long, um, complete analysis. Now, when I give a test like this to my students, I like to give the first and second derivatives only because I'm testing their graphing skills. So if you said, oh, you're so easy on your students, I wanted to test, I didn't want to know if they could find the first and second derivatives, although it might be a really good exercise for you if your teacher doesn't give you these, make sure you can get from here to first and second derivatives before you begin. Okay, so it says, Use an appropriate scale in your graph to show your points clearly. So we've got a little graph down here in the corner. We'll get to that in a minute. Determine all x and y intercepts. Okay, so make some nice rules here. For x-intercept, set y equal to 0. For y-intercept, set x equal to 0. That's the original function we're talking about here. So if I set this equal to 0, the only thing that makes the numerator 0 is 0. So x-intercept is 0. Don't say x equals 0. That's not right. That's an equation of a line. For y-intercept, set x equal to 0. So I get 0 divided by 9, which is also 0. y-intercept is 0. Okay, first part done. This is 1. Two, determine all horizontal and vertical asymptotes. If you have a big question like this, it's also really nice if you um, help your teacher out either by putting a box over your answers or, you know, labeling them. Don't write stuff all over the page. It used to drive me crazy. So vertical asymptotes. Okay, let's look here. What makes the denominator zero? That's vertical. So three. So x equals three is vertical asymptote. And I'm also going to make a note to myself that because this is a degree of 2, that means it's an even 
asymptote. That means the function is going to go in the same direction, either both up or both down, to be determined. Okay, so that's vertical horizontal asymptote. So this is x in the numerator, it's x squared in the denominator. So this is going to grow much faster. So as x approaches infinity, this is infinity squared dividing into little baby infinity. That means it's going to be zero. y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, now we've got four marks already. Determine the coordinates of all max and minimum points. Justify. Justify? When they, you see that word, it means prove it. Prove your conclusions. Okay, so this is going to be 3. I'm going to say for critical values, set f prime x equal to 0. And here's that already done for you. So setting that equal to 0, I need to know what makes the numerator 0. So what makes this 0? Minus 3x plus 3 equals 0 when x equals minus 3. So minus 3 is what I need to test here. Now I can either test minus 3 into the second derivative and see if it's positive or negative. So let's do second derivative test. So f double prime at minus 3 equals, all I want to know is it positive or negative. This is always going to be positive because it's raised to a fourth power. In the numerator, um, 6 minus 3 plus 6, that's positive. Everything is positive. So it's all going to be greater than 0. Therefore, my little trick was to draw like this. So this shows a minimum value. Minimum at and I need to know the coordinates, uh, minus 3 back in here, that's 9 over um, minus 3, 6, 36. So 9 over 36, that's um, minus, minus 1 quarter, right? So minimum at minus 3, minus 1 quarter. Okay, the other way you could have done it was to do a first derivative test and plug in minus 3 into your first derivative. So this is where it's zero. So I'm going to the left and the right. If I put in negative four, this is going to give me negative times a negative is a positive divided by a negative. So it's going to be negative. Negative slope. On this side, let's go to, let's see if we can do zero. Yeah, zero, we got negative nine over negative 27. Negative times negative is a positive. So that also shows a minimum value. Okay, so we're all good on that. Four, determine the coordinates of all points of inflection. Okay, so for points of inflection, set f double prime x equal to zero. That's what we learned. So if you look at f double prime x, so I want to make six times x plus six equal to zero, means x is going to be negative. 6. Okay, so we need to check to see if we have a point of inflection by doing a second derivative. We're going to test on the second derivative line here. So I'm going to put a minus 6 here and I'm going to check numbers to the left and right. So looking back up to this equation here, if I put in negative 7, this is going to be negative in the top, positive in the bottom, Negative means concave down. If I go to the right, let's say put in 1. This is all positive. So it's concave up on that side. So therefore, point of inflection at minus 6. And I need to find the y-coordinate. So you plug it in here. That would give you negative 18 over 81. Negative 18 over negative 81, that's going to be minus 2 over 9 when you reduce it. Okay, so we've done all that. Provide a sketch of the curve on the given axis, identifying all parts of the graphical analysis determined above, and then state the intervals of increase, decrease, and intervals of concavity. Let's do the intervals first. So, interval of increase. 
Okay, intervals have increased. That looks at the slopes here, right, for first derivative. So it's going to be increasing from minus 3 to infinity and decreasing because this is where, where the slopes are positive. So it's increasing from minus 3 to, oh, we have to check. Ooh, I almost did something very bad here. You also have to check um, for intervals of increase. This is okay for this one, but if you, um, you need to know what's happening on the asymptote, the vertical asymptote, 3. So is the function still increasing on this side? Right? We need to know that. So this is your, um, it's a critical value because it's a vertical asymptote is also a critical value. It's not a critical point, but it's a critical value for the function. So if I go to the right of 3 here, let's say I put in 4 up here. So 4 plus 3, this is going to be negative up here. 4 minus 3 is positive, so negative by positive is negative. So that means on this side of the graph, it's going to be concave down. This does not mean a maximum because it is an asymptote, and you should label it as such. Okay, big mistake on my part. You should have put that in there. Okay, so intervals of increase, it's increasing between the minimum value here of minus 3 and the vertical asymptote. So x is an element of minus 3 to 3. That's it. Intervals of decrease. So it's probably good that I showed you a mistake because then you won't do it yourself, right? Make sure you put that in your vertical asymptote. Interval of decrease. So it's decreasing. So x is an element of negative infinity to minus 3 and 3 to infinity. Okay, and finally, we need the concavity. So you read that right off these graphs, right? So it's going to be concave up, concave up between um, minus infinity. We didn't put the three on here as well. It should be here as well, so we need to plug that in here. Um, minus th infinity, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Let's make a sketch here, and then we'll come back to that just for a second here. Okay, so let's put in our asymptotes. We have y equals 0, because I think I'm f missing something here. And we had a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so here's x equals 3, y equals 0. We have, um, we crossed x and y intercepts are 0. And it is a point of inflection at minus 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 6. And minus two ninths. So I'm going to make this scale. Um, I'm going to make this minus a quarter here, minus a half. Okay, so that little one here at minus six, mm -hmm. minus six and two ninths. So two ninths, three ninths is a third. So it's going to be about here. So this is. This is going up on this side. It's coming down. And then it's going to turn around here. Um, we had a minimum value. Where was our minimum? We didn't put that on here. Minus three and minus a quarter. Let's get that fixed up here. Always put your points on. Minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus a quarter. So it's coming down here. That's my minimum value. And 2 ninths is less than, 2 ninths is less than a quarter, right? 2 ninths. So right about here, there's just a little tiny change in concavity as we come back up. 
it's hard to sketch on this degree of scale. So here's my point of inflection. So minus six and minus two ninths. And this is my minimum value of minus three, minus one quarter minimum. Okay, and then on this side of the function, this was an even, so this has to be going up and this is going to approach infinity. Okay, so you can see we have from here to here, so negative infinity to negative infinity to minus six, it's concave down. Let's do the concave down one. Concave down, negative infinity to minus six. And where is it concave up? Well, it's concave up from minus six to three, and also three to infinity. These are all concave up. So minus six to minus three, u means union, also including, and three to infinity. So you have to break it up just because you have this um, vertical asymptote in there. Okay, so there's your big, beautiful, lovely 16 mark graphing question. Okay, hope that helped you out. Make sure again, make sure you do this. Okay, don't do the mistake I did. Put in your vertical asymptote as well. It's also a critical value. It's not a critical point because, but you still have to check on both sides of that or you would have missed what happens down here. Okay, good luck on your test. And um, you only have one more chapter left in calculus, maybe, unless you've done five first. And maybe this is your last chapter. So congratulations. All the best.